The Old Testament says, I have set before you life and death. Therefore, I'm not going to legislate the answer for you. Therefore, choose life. I don't know about you, but my heart is praying for all the women of America today. Um, unless you're under a rock, you are fully aware of the overturning by the Supreme Court of Roe versus Wade. Again, I say my prayers are for the women of America today. Um, I'm grateful to know that the God we serve is not a single issue savior. Amen. The God we serve is not a single issue savior. God is not a donkey. <laughs> He's not an elephant. How many of y'all know he is the lamb that was slain? Amen. And you all, it's a perplexed issue. This week, America turned back the hands of time and declared war on women in this nation. As a Christian pastor, I do not believe that abortion is mankind at its best. Now, there are some exceptions, um, to be sure. But generally speaking, as a, pa as a pastor, I don't believe that abortion is mankind at its best. But as a man that can't carry or give birth to children, I recognize that it is not my place to decide what a woman can and cannot do with her body. Y'all do know America's going to hell, right? But my conviction is America can't go to hell with me and my family living here. I know that's not politically correct. I'm not supposed to say that. And some people will say, well, Bishop, you're a man of God. Are you pro-abortion? I am pro-human and civil rights. What? With this measure that has just taken place, a baby, black baby infant mortality is going to rise by 30%. Uh, and hence, we cover the lives of our mothers, of our pregnant mothers, and our unborn babies. So I'm trying to figure out a way to say something ungodly. I'm trying to find an ungodly way to say something godly without appearing or sounding ungodly. If you just look around, there's there's a lot of problems that we have in America, and you would think that the source for curing or solving or settling some of the problems here in America would begin in the church. Historically, historically, in what we call the black church, and we won't get too much into the why we even have this thing called the black church and the segregated times that we choose on ourselves and so forth, although it's gotten better, we won't, we won't address that right now. The fact of the matter is that, that, that most blacks tend to go to a church that is predominantly attended by other blacks. And historically, that church has been a source of comfort. Uh, it has helped the black community in many cases through some tough times without question, without question. Usually, though, if we go back and look historically, it has been through the book, through the Bible. Has it always been that every leader in the black church, the black church has been tattered to or tied to the scriptures? No, there have been some that have, that have been more civil rights leaders than actual pastor. But still, you would think that by and large that a person in the pulpit would decide that he is going to lead by what thus saith the Lord actually says. Not today. Not today. And so y'all, y'all help me out because I'm going to try to do my very best not to get too, <laughs> what's the word, as we say in the community, ignorant. I'm going to try to be godly. I'm going to try my best to refrain from some, some level of attack. I'm going to do so without, I'm going to try to do so, I should say, without hurling 
a lot of insults. I may I may hurl some. I've got some in my back in my pocket, front two pockets, back pockets. I might y'all pray for me because to hear these men speak, and I'm gonna get into why I'm talking about the death of the black church or the dying of the black church because nothing is more emblematic of the problems that we have in the black church such as what's happening with a lot of these black pastors, these so-called black, so-called pastors of these so-called churches, what's happening with them in this latest ruling. You would, this shouldn't even be a debatable issue. We should all be in lockstep, but unfortunately we have that. And some of you have seen the videos. As a matter of fact, I just saw uh, two of the videos yesterday. And I'm, I'm telling you, riled up, riled up. Up. I was upset. I mean, I I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about it. I was I was hot. I, I'm doing my best, y'all, not to not to use that word that we're told not to use, uh, not to use that word that if you drive down any black neighborhood you go hear it all the time. I am I am trying my best not to use that word that begins with that it it begins with the letter that comes after M. It becomes for oh, I'm trying not to use that word. I really am. I, 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 I'm not going to use that word. I'm going to try not to use that word. I shouldn't say what I'm not going to do. I'm trying not to use that word. But if, if ever there was a time that it fit, it's with these Negroes. I, let, let me just skirt it a little bit and say, and say these Negroes. These colored folk. Yeah. I'm I, Listen. Where's a where's a Klansman when you need them? Because <laughs> you you guys are doing the work of them. Anyway, I want to get into the stupidity, the absolute foolishness of some of these people. Yeah, let, 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 let's go ahead and get into it from this guy who was a, I guess, you, you know, nowadays, if you were a singer, people will follow you if you start a church. And so this guy, William Murphy, who is kind of out there anyway, um, has a church. So now he's Bishop William Murphy. And I want you, let's just start off hearing some of the retarded. I don't, I know some folks could get offended by this, but the word retarded is an actual word. And when you're, when you're, when your thought pattern is slowed <laughs> and it, that's clearly the same with these people like him. Yeah, it, it fits. Listen to one of his arguments and we'll just kind of just track through this. It's my conviction that a man, because let's go here, okay? So let's all the guys, let's all, let's all set appointments to get vasectomies. They not shutting the vasectomy clinics down. I don't hear nobody saying nothing. I didn't see one protester outside of a vasectomy clinic. I didn't see one. Because I want to ask him, have any babies died inside of the vasectomy clinic? What would they protest at the vasectomy clinic? By the way, I didn't know they even had a vasectomy clinic. But then I looked up, they actually do have clinics for vasectomy. I just thought they would go to the doctor's office and bam, snip, snip, uh, and there you go. But Mr. Murphy, please tell us, why would someone want to protest what's happening inside of a vasectomy clinic? Some, someone help me out. I would love for someone to tell me why uh, we need to protest what's happening in a vasectomy clinic. Is there anything immoral happening? Is there anything that goes counter to the Bible, Mr. Pastor, in that clinic? Now, I can think of a few things that, that are immoral and goes counter to the Bible in a Planned Parenthood clinic or any other place that gives an abortion. I can I can think of a few things that go against God's word, Mr. Pastor. But that's just me. Maybe, maybe I'm reading, I'm reading my Bible wrong. Maybe that, maybe that's what it is. But let's get back to it. But but we want to legislate. We li listen, we cannot legislate morality. That's that's why the church is in existence. That's why there's a separation of church and state. That that that's why the church, the church legislates morality. The government legislates the law of God. Now, first of all, 
Did you hear what he just said? He just, I don't know if you're coughing. He just said the government legislates the law of God. What? What? The government legislates the law of God. The government legislates the law of God. That's just not, <laughs> it's not thinking. That's not thinking. It's not reading your Bible, but okay, fine. You may, maybe, maybe, you know, he gets, because sometimes you, your emotions take over. You feel like that you're preaching to, to your audience and everyone is, is filling you. And of course, uh, maybe there's somebody in the audience like, is, is, is what he's saying right? Okay, well, hey, man, maybe I'm just missing it. I'll, I'll go ahead and go along with it. Maybe that's what's happening. You're supposed to be a pastor. You're supposed to be leading people. The fact of the matter is you got a room full of pe people, colored folk. <laughs> you got a room full of these people that are cheering you on. It would seem to me that the shepherd ought to be leading instead of giving a pep rally to the, to the sheep who want to be wayward. No clear direction there, but I want to start looking at some some of the things that he says, and so let's tackle it. So them. women have rights too. I don't have a right to tell you that. And somebody said, "Well, some uh, super religious person." Now, what he's getting ready to talk about, and what he's saying that we don't have the right to tell someone what to do with their body. Well, I've got the right to tell you what God said. I've got that right. And oh, by the way, can 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 we just be be serious? We do tell people what to do with their body. We do. We tell people you can't blow stuff up. We tell people you can't set you can't set your own house on fire, can you? We tell people you cannot look at or possess child porn, or guess what? You can't even possess or create drawings. Doesn't have to be a real child. You can just draw one. You can't even possess that or look at it. So we tell people all the time what they can and can't do, even with their own body. But we're not telling you what to do with your body. The reason why you can't have explosives, even if you want to blow yourself up or blow your house up or burn your, burn your own house down, is because what you may end up doing to somebody else. That's why. And so we absolutely can do that. But more to the point, are you saying pastor, preacher, supposed man of God, so-called black, so-called pastor of a so-called church, are you saying that we cannot say to someone what God has says on his planet, this is his world, right? The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and they that dwell in it are his. Are, are, are we not allowed to say what God has said? Wow. If that's the case, then what's the point and purpose of your church? Who got a bunch of sin in their life said, well, abstinence is the answer. Well, you didn't abstain. Now, I want you guys to listen to him. Tell me, does this guy sound like a Christian, not a pastor? He's, does he sound like, he almost sounds like a person who is against Christians, the kind of person that you walk up to and maybe trying to share the gospel, the person that, that would say all the negative things or the bad things about the Christians, you guys are hypocrites. Is that, that's the kind of the vibe that I get from him. And what kills me is people out there protesting already have one. You had one in your younger years. And then now, he just impugned everyone as though everybody that's against abortions have had abortions. Well, most people have not had abortions. Now, I don't know what that's looking like for, for the black community uh, because we represent, though we are, what, 13, 12, 13, 14, 15 percent, depending on how you measure it. We represent that percent of the of the entire population, but represent 40, about 40 percent of all abortions. You don't think that something's a little bit out of out of kilter, out of whack there. So I don't know how many black folks have most have had abortions or not. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I didn't look into that stat. Uh, but let's say if they did. They can't find out and figure out and tell you the horrors of it and come back and say you don't want that. Because the only people that have, that have had abortions are, are women. But I thought you guys didn't want, I thought you, you wanted men to stay out of it and didn't want women, you only wanted the opinions of women. And so if a woman who's had one comes and tells you you shouldn't get one, then what's the problem? We'll get to that problem in a second, which is the cause of the decline and possibly even the death of the black church. Tell me you're, you're protecting the unborn. 
Because if you're really pro-life, you wouldn't be cutting back funding for schools. If you're pro-life, you wouldn't be fighting for 18-year-olds to buy machine guns. Now, before it continues, I want to say this. I am pro-life. Pro-life to me does not mean I am pro everything else. I am pro irresponsibility. I am pro making everything in your life fine, happy, comfortable. That is not what I am. And oh, by the way, that's not what Jesus was on this earth. Oh, by the way, that's not who God is. Pro everything in your life has to be comfortable. Pro there can never be anything wrong in your life or else we need to fix it. No, no. Especially when the things that are, that are going on in your life are caused by you. And so when we say, hey, don't do this, even if even if, even if we've gone through it ourselves. Because who better to tell you why you shouldn't go to prison than a person who's been in prison? Who better to tell you about the problems of drug use than a person who struggled with it? So I, I fail to see the usefulness of you. What I'm starting to see, what I'm starting to see is that since there have been about, tw about 20 million, I, I don't know, give or take a million, huh? About 20 million babies have been aborted, black babies have been aborted. Do you all, are you like me? Are you starting to wonder if maybe the wrong 20 million have been aborted? Do you, are you starting to wonder if the wrong folks have been aborted? May, maybe William Murphy, maybe the wrong child got aborted. I'm not saying we ought to kill you, but what I'm saying is you, just, you seem to be so, so pro-abortion. Try it for yourself. I say try it out and see how you like it. For those of you who, try, who like abortion, <laughs> my point is, hey, try it and see if you like it. I can promise you that the babies who have been aborted, if they had a second chance, if they can come back and tell you, they would say, ah, it's not what it's cracked up to be. You wouldn't listen to them, though. But anyway, let's continue. If you're really pro-life, why are you fighting for somebody who's not in law enforcement, somebody who's not in the military, to have a legal right, a constitutional right, to purchase a clip that holds a hundred bullets. So that folk that look like you in your neighborhood don't come and jump me. That way I can, I can take care of my family. That's why. How many bullets, how many bullets does it take to, not, to kill somebody? I don't know. But the whole purpose of a gun, yeah, is to kill somebody who's trying to attack you. If I wanted to just to, if I wanted to give them a soft word, I'd give them a track in the middle of, of them trying to rob me. And if they're not going to hear the word of God, I'd like to have a bullet, please. That, that's what I like to have. So, but you're pro-life. This is about, and listen to me, once the door is open, don't y'all, don't y'all see this way. Y'all got to wake up and stop being so spiritual. And so he is going to tell me that he has a real problem with people trying to be, as he says, spiritual, um, righteous, godly. He has a real problem with that. He, he, he really does. Heavenly bound that you're no earthly good. This is not just about reproductive rights. This is about voting rights. It's about civil rights. It's about human rights. Did you hear what he said? That's the issue. In this church as a pastor, it's not about that. It's about human rights, civil rights, voting rights, all these things that one particular party is trying to get us to fall lockstep in line with. That's what it is. My position is that the Bible is still right. Look at somebody say, the Bible is still right. Okay, I'm with you, Pastor, Rev, Bishop. I'm looking at everybody that's looking at me. The Bible is still right. The Bible, now, I want you to notice something about what he's getting ready to say and what you haven't heard. So when it comes to these issues, I don't have an opinion. When it comes to these issues, I do not have an opinion. Though you're giving us your opinion right now. If you ask me what I think about an issue, I'm going to find a scripture and I'm going to read that scripture. Hmm. Because I don't have an opinion, I have a conviction. Okay. That the word of God is still true. Okay. Somebody write that down. The word of God is still true. Sounds good, doesn't so it? So it, I, I don't have to believe in same-sex marriage. I don't have to believe in it. But what I do believe is I don't have a right to tell you who you can and cannot marry. Hmm. 
Look at somebody tell them, mind your own business. Who tends to tell people to mind their own business other than some folks who don't want you in theirs because they are awfully afraid, awfully afraid of what they're doing might end up being exposed as well. The reason why I won't speak out about sin is because maybe, just maybe, I've got some sin. And if you find out about it, you won't say that I'm a hypocrite. Yeah. What it is, is it, what do we call it? Cover your behind. That's what that is. I'll make sure that if I say this, you can never come back and say, because we've got some people in the past who have spoken out about, about a particular sin. And then lo and behold, they get caught doing that particular sin. Right. And so maybe that's just him covering himself to make sure, well, at least, you know, I was struggling and I don't want anyone to know that I'm a fake Christian. I'm a real Christian. I ain't going to stand up for God, but I'll just be real about my sin. Okay. Yeah, you know, because church folk want to, y'all kill me because y'all some of the most nasty, freakiest, sex havingest, illegal sex havingest folk I know and want to make this about righteousness. That's why people not joining church because they know how fake we are. Hmm. We're going to be real about it. This is not about righteousness. This is about civil and human rights. Did you already say it? It's not about righteousness, but it's about civil and human rights. Code for a liberal agenda. Now, he said the reason why people aren't joining church is because people are fake. No, no. Uh, people aren't joining maybe your church because they're not hearing the word of God. Now, I want you all to notice something or try to search for something that, see if you can try to read my mind. See if you can try to read my mind what I'm thinking about what he has either said or hadn't said. And I'll, I'll, I'll get to it in just a second. We're going to be real about it. This is not about righteousness. This is about civil and human rights. Mm. Because if the precedent is the Constitution doesn't talk about abortion, well, the Constitution also says I'm three-fifths of a human being. The Constitution also says that I don't have a right to vote. I'm telling y'all, this is an open... So let me just address that real quick, too. First of all, the Constitution does not say that black people are two or three-fifths of a person. It does not. That particular article of the Constitution addresses uh, representation in Congress and taxation, and it was put there as a deterrent to states to have slaves. So if you want to have slaves, okay, fine. We're not counting your slaves as a whole person and your representation in Congress. In places like, let's say, a South Carolina or Mississippi, where either either a law, I think 30, 40% of the population at one time may have swelled to uh, slaves. And so you're not going to have that population being represented in Congress. That way you'll have an overrepresentative view or voice in Congress. That was a point. There's no such thing as black folks ever being counted as three-fifths of a person. Stop buying into that, people. Now, I can say this because my, my major in college was political science. It's, it's a fact. But all you got to do is just go to the Internet and just pull up the Constitution. Secondly, you have what Constitution, what, which part of the Constitution says that you, can't, you don't have the right to vote? We've got the 13th Amendment that freed black folks. We've got the 14th Amendment that gave everybody equal protection and the 15th Amendment, which made sure that any and everybody can vote. By the way, Mr. Pastor, Doc, Reverend, uh, so-called pastor, so-called black, so-called black pastor of a so-called church, you have never in your life lived at a time where you couldn't vote. And you were born after the civil rights movement. Please miss everybody black or with a mind with that ridiculous train of thought. Please, please. Your first reproductive rights, then voting rights, then civil rights, then human rights. This this is just the beginning of a demonic agenda and the church has to get in the gap. But when the church gets in the gap, you call it racist. You call you, you just call it demonic. You call it demonic. Well, and since you and since you mentioned since you mentioned since you mentioned the constitution no since you mentioned the supreme court do you know that you pastor and the supreme court mentioned the bible and a quote and quoted the bible the exact same amount of times yeah the supreme court in their decision quoted the Bible the same time, the same amount of times that you just did. 
which was zero. They didn't quote the Bible in their decision, nor did you quote the Bible in your disdain. How about you? How about you grab the Bible that you say that you're supposed to be under the unction and the authority of and read from it? That would be a good start. That would be a good start. But now it would be one thing if he's the only one. He's not. He's not. The problem is we have a whole lot of other so-called black, so-called pastors of so-called churches espousing the same nonsense. Don't believe me? If America was authentically pro-life, then they would immediately abolish the death penalty. If they were really pro-life, then they would pour more money into Head Start. Now, let me ask you guys a question. If we were pro-life, we would abolish the death penalty. Who, who was the first person to institute the death penalty? I don't know. I, it seems to be the first time that I've ever read about a death penalty was God. And oh, by the way, he actually has a death penalty for uh, a baby being being killed in the womb. He's got a death penalty for that. We'll cover that in just a little bit. We'll cover that. But let's let's finish listening to this absolute idiotic statement that he's going to make. Programs. If they were pro-life, they would seek to cure the opiate addiction in this nation. If they were pro-life, they would make sure that teachers feel safe in their schools. If they were pro-life, there would be stiff, stricter measures about gun control in this nation. If it was pro-life, we would not have to deal with food insecurity. But I stand with now the living matriarch of the movement, Maxine Waters, who said that He said the living matriarch of the movement. If Maxine Waters is who you get your marching steps from, you are on your way to hell. There, there's no if, ands, buts about it. If that's who you get your marching orders from, uh, yeah, he does look like R. Kelly. <laughs> but <laughs> Maxine Waters is who you get your march. But again, again, this tells us what's behind the movement. And this is going to help us get to the point of why I'm saying that either the black church is dead or dying to address these falling numbers of black church attendance. Now, church attendance by and large and across all spectrums is falling, but especially in the black community. But let, let's continue. We have declared war on 32 million women in this nation. We if you're gonna talk about declaring war on women in this nation, how about declare, How about you repenting from for the war you declared against your wife when you cheated on her? How about that? Well, I'm sorry. I was wrong for bringing that up, but you have no right to speak about what, what goes on uh, or what's wrong with women, their problems, how they've been hurt. I, I'm just, I just thought I'd throw it out there. Stand, but we realize that this is not just a woman's issue. Unless I don't understand how pregnancy works, men have to extend their voices as well. And so we- but I'm, I'm confused though. I thought men don't have the right to give an opinion. I thought we don't. Okay, so you guys have to make it up. Yeah, I mean, make, make up your minds. Either we cannot give a voice to this, or we can, or maybe it's the only voice that we can give. Is the one that is in favor of what you believe. I get it now. You're only tolerant of people who think and speak like you. Jamal Bryant, you are a horrible pastor. Not to mention, not, not that great of a, of, a, of a husband, but you are a horrible pastor. Horrible pastor. I'm going to have to address this in just a little bit. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to it, but uh, horrible pastor. But I want to see if you also give some, some Bible verses as well. That, that, that's what I want to do. Speak to this nation to declare that new birth stands with the amazing women of this church, of this community, and of this country, that women have the right to have authority over their body. Not if you're a Christian. Not if you're a Christian, you don't. And I believe you're supposed to be speaking to a room full of Christian. But there are Christian women here who are just clapping. But it does speak about, we'll look at the scripture about men like as yourself coming in and deceiving, um, creeping in and taking captive silly women. 
and it should not be legislated by men in Washington, D.C. Though we didn't have a problem when these men in Washington, D.C. gave us Roe v. Wade, gave us Casey versus Planned Parenthood. We don't have we didn't have a problem with them then. It's just now. Oh, by the way, it's just not old white men now. The most diverse court we've ever had. We've got one, two, we've got how many women? Three women, soon to be four. We've got one black, soon to be two. Uh, one, two, three, I think three Hispanics. So pretty diverse court. And we have this ruling now. We're praying steadfastly because what we are seeing uh, is racism rearing its head mm. again mm. Uh, with this measure that has just taken place a uh, baby black baby infant mortality is going to rise by 30 percent okay okay the hard part is not getting on a plane flying to atlanta and just punching him. I want to punch him because of how stupid you are concerned about infant mortality. That's babies dying, but not about killing the babies. I may not be the smartest person. So y'all help me out. Help me out. Especially some of you guys in the chats that are critical of what I'm saying, which I don't understand how that could be, but help me understand how you're concerned about babies dying but you you don't like the fact that we prevented or try to prevent babies from dying in the first place. Huh. I'm I, I'm trying to figure this help me. Maybe the Lord tell me before the before this 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 broadcast is over what this rationale of his is. Uh, and hence, we cover the lives of our mothers, of our pregnant mothers, and our unborn babies. I need you to do me a favor, please. While last Sunday was Father's Day, today we stand in... Now, listen to what he is getting ready to talk about what he's getting ready to do. <laughs> this is literally the dumbest thing that he is getting ready to... It's the most hypocritical thing that I've... I'm, listen, people say the most and words that in an EST uh, hyperbole all the time, but this is the dumbest, the most, whatever you have ever heard, the most hypocritical thing that you've ever seen or heard ever. He has a problem with babies being aborted. He, ha I mean, he has a problem with stopping babies from being aborted. He has a problem with babies not being killed. We should, we should not, we should not end that right of babies being killed, which by the way, this didn't solve that. He's got a problem with possibly stopping babies from being killed. And look what he says. Gap for mothers and for emerging mothers. I need you to do me a favor, please, because I need you to be mindful that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty unto God for the pulling down of strongholds. There is something satanic afoot in Washington, D.C. Yeah, it is. Something if satanic. the body of Christ yep. remains silent in this hour, we are going to miss the call of God. So today, proudly, it is. we dedicate... Uh, we dedicate babies in our church. They're coming at the call of God. Judy just said, so today, play it again. Proudly, we dedicate, uh, we dedicate babies in our church. They're coming at this time uh, because uh, we believe the children are the future. Uh, but we also believe. I believe the children are future. Okay, so this idiot. Yeah, I'm calling him a name. I do not care because it's so idiotic. You are having a baby dedication while you are slamming, while you are slamming the protection of unborn babies. You are saying you're talking about mothers and what do you call them? Emerging mothers. Well, if you abort babies, you're not likely to be a mother. <laughs> so, yeah, critics in the in the chats, tell me something. Tell me, tell me what I'm missing. Defend this. De defend this stupidity, defend this satanic movement of his. Someone tell me this. You're having, you're talking about 
abortion needs to be legalized, least. And he didn't. He didn't. He didn't do the the normal thing. It should be safe, legal, and rare. He didn't do. He didn't go that route. And he didn't say uh, what about rape and incest. No, he didn't, he didn't bring that up. He just man, just listen. Have it unfettered. Kill the babies while we're having a baby dedication ceremony. And then here come these women. That mothers have the right to elect where it is that they are in the season and the stages of their life. And they should not be criminalized for making decisions that, that will best suit them for where it is that they are. Mm, mm, mm. I'm gonna get back to some of the comments in, in, the, in the chat. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Uh, you who have an issue, um, we're going to talk about this. The problem is you're a pastor and you're supposed to be leading people to the word of God, to the heart of God. Whatever God is for, you should be for. But it's not just him. Uh, I want to introduce you to this guy. His name is Mark Anthony Thomas, I believe, of African Conti. Episcopal Missionary First Baptist Church of Christ and God Assemblies of Hell. I don't know what the, what this church is, um, but he's a pastor there, and he's got an issue. I find it incredibly ironic that these so-called pro-life justices are championing the cause of protecting unborn children while failing to safeguard the lives and the minds and the psychological well-being of young black and brown children everywhere. Don't tell me you're pro-life when you won't teach critical race theory the truth about what happened to black people in America. Don't tell me that you're pro-life if you don't go to church to the synagogue or to the mosque and truly ask all God almighty to help you make decisions that will lead you into a deeper relationship with the word of God. How do you go to the mosque and hope that that person is going to come to a deeper relationship with the word of God? Oh, I know how, what you mean, because since you don't have one, you don't, you think it's, you can find that anywhere in the mosque. But he mentioned about a critical race theory. That, that's the issue, guys. And I'm going to make this, I'm going I'm I'm to pull my point out in just a second. I'm going to pull my point out. No, I'm going to pull it out now. I'll go ahead and jump to it now. The problem with the black church, the problem with the so-called black, so-called pastors of these so-called churches, the problem is this. They have decided to be part of a movement, but not God's movement. Yeah. Uh, Shouldn't we be about our father's business? But you're not. You're not. Uh, you have decided that you want to be a civil rights leader. In the mold of Raphael Warnick, in the mold of Martin Luther King Jr., you, or in the mold of Jeremiah Wright, Meeks, Freddie Haynes, who I'm going to get to in a second, my favorite, Freddie Haynes. You'd much rather be a star for the civil rights movement than just a small portion, a small part of what God is doing. Now, there is a reward here for doing one, and there's a reward then in the future for doing the other. You want to be something special. You want to be thought of. You want a CNN crew to come and interview you. ABC, CBS, you want someone to come and talk to you about, hey, why it is that the black churches should be for this, for that. Because to be a pastor who's pro-abortion, people are going to want to talk to you. And that's what you want. Hunt them all. Is that, that's what they want. You want people to hear you. Right, William? You are an entertainer after all. And, and the problem with the churches, not all black churches, because we're going to find out that not all black churches are like this, but more and more, you have this desire, this friendship with the world. Let me just go ahead and put this up real quick. You have this friendship with the world that you seem to want to. 
Let's put it up. Let's, let, let's go to uh, James 4. He says, you adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Let me say that again. Whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Well, you just look at Jamal Bryan's whole history. That That's kind of him. Yeah, from, from Baltimore to Atlanta. The guy, no good. No good. Uh, same thing in Atlanta. We've got pastors who've decided that forget what God has said. God, you ain't, no, God, you take a back seat. Now, I hold the Bible because I got to make it look like that I'm actually uh, a preacher of the word. And I can say the word here, say the word there to get you all to kind of move a little bit, to shout a little bit, to sweat a little bit, though there is no biblical edification whatsoever. A pastor's job is to lead with the word of God and his thoughts ought to be in that. He is constrained not by his own feelings, but by the word of God. That's what it's supposed to be. And if you can't do that, well, then Pastor uh, uh, Jamal Bryant, leave. William Murphy, leave. Freddie Haynes, leave. Uh, Mr. Thomas, leave. And anyone else, leave. And if you call yourself a Christian and Christ doesn't guide you, well, then we got a question. Are you actually a Christian? And it's not to be mean spirited. Really, it's not to be mean spirited. Paul says, let every man examine himself. Make sure that you have Christ. Well, how's one way? What's one way that you can know? What well, am I being led by him? Do I do I at least internally desire to be led by him? Now, if I at least internally desire to be led by him and I'm not outwardly, because that happens sometimes with all of us. The question is why? Well, if the answer is because I've, I've, I've got too much friendship with the world, well, then you're not saved. You're not a Christian. Though you might look like one, though you might talk like one, speak, you know, walk like one, have all the, the Christian entities about you. Now, I got to get to my to my main man who I do, who I have met before, spent some time with before. I haven't talked to him in several years, but uh, he was a crook then. And he hadn't gotten better. As a matter of fact, he he is more pro-black. You think Jeremiah Wright was something else. This guy is, it, he he's Jeremiah Wright times 10. This is the guy who on the side of his church has the Black Lives Matter. This is the guy who has uh, the little African symbols all over. He has the pyramids to symbolize Egypt uh, on his church. He's the one with the African onk. This is none other than uh, Fast Freddie Haynes. We decided you may try to suppress us and hold us down, but we got too much John Lewis in us. We got too much Amelia Boynton in us. We've got too much Martin King in us. We've got Ella Baker in us. And we who believe in freedom will not rest until it comes. And we popped up into our mother God's hands. And we popped up in spite of the suppression. And we popped up into our mother God's hands. I'm calling it out and saying we've got an evil lieutenant governor. I got to call out a governor who decides he's going to wage war on children because of how they were created and the governor is declaring war on trans children and I see some of y'all getting all funny right now because you're saying well why are you dealing with trans? It's because they are still children created by almighty God and anybody that would declare war on children is of the devil. So my question is, is how come it seems like that the only children that seem to matter to these people are trans children, children that are suffering as their parents say, because the kids don't know, but kids who their parents say are trans, who have this identity problem. Those seem to be the only children that matter. Right. Not the unborn, certainly not the black babies. No, maybe the reason maybe if if you know what. If white police officers were the ones that were performing abortions on black babies, that would that would get everybody in lockstep. Right. The entire Democratic Party would raise would rise up. All of these pastors who want to be of the world, that would cause them to move to. Yeah, think about that. If 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 white police officers were the ones who were actually performing abortions, 
then abortion would be outlawed immediately in every state. In California first, New York would soon follow. Boston, Massachusetts, Illinois. But trans babies are the only, trans kids are the only, only ones that care. And you also heard this guy say, mother guy, doctrine is off. Well, it's no mistake. It's no mistake that people like this have no doctrine to speak of. They don't stand on the Bible, but the Bible, what, what is that? They'll tell you the Bible might be antiquated, outdated. We've got to revise the way that we look at it. That's these people. ABC did something where they were looking at the black community and abortion. This might have been a few months ago, a year ago. I, I can't remember exactly how long, whatever. But I want to play a couple of clips for this and then continue and then make my point. You're a black woman. Yes. You're a Christian. Yeah, I am. You are also a strong advocate for abortion rights. Yes. Is that a conflict to other people? I'm black. I'm a woman. I love God. I go to church and I believe in abortion. But people would be surprised to hear you say God is calling you yeah. to help provide abortion rights. Yeah. And then I would say to them, what is God calling you to do? You need somebody always in the midst of the mud. If you have an issue with where God has placed me to be able to fight for people, then that's something you got to take up for God. This black skin is beautiful, but it's hard. We suffer in poverty, health care, and so it's like another barrier on top of us when we decide to make a decision to terminate. So she says that we had to make a decision what God has called us. God has called us to take a stand for his word and to call out sin. And what you're saying, lady, is, is, is sinful. And to promote sin. It's not that you may have been caught up in a sin, but you are promoting it. You are facilitating it. You are a proud supporter, uh, someone who's embraced it and trying to propagate it throughout the country. That kind of a person, without question, this is not a doubt, guys. This is not someone trying to read into someone's heart and so forth. That kind of stuff is called out in the Bible, and that person is on their way to hell. Now, I don't know if she will ever change her tune, if she'll ever repent. If she doesn't, if she doesn't repent, well, then she's going to hell. There's no way that you could, that she said, I'm a Christian. Well, what she really is, and you saw what was most important to her, was that she was black. There's no black heaven. There's no white heaven. There's no Hispanic heaven, Asian. No, no, there's just one heaven. And the it, admittance into that heaven, the admittance into a relationship with God is his red blood shed on the cross. That's it. Someone asked why, why? Why do I have the shirt that red lives matter? Because that's the life that matters the most. If your life is not covered by his blood, don't matter. Do what you want to do. Go where you want to go. Do where you want to do what you want to do. Be you want to be. I don't care. Remember that old song? Well, that's true. If your life is not covered by the blood, then in the very end, it doesn't matter. You'll find yourself with great company. You ain't got to worry about uh, global warming. <laughs> it's going to be hot and the fire will not die. Now, there's a lady who met, who in that same in that same show, uh, she said something profound. And I would say this to address something that uh, the good Reverend Dr. William Murphy said about people who might be out there protesting against abortion who may have had some. Uh, listen to what this lady said. At what point did you stake out a feeling about abortion and whether it's right or should be even allowed? After my second one. After your second one? After my second one. You did have a second abortion? I did. I sat on my floor and I wept. At that point is when the Lord started to really work on me because I was tired of being a subpar Christian. I was tired of saying I was a Christian and not acting like one. That's how it should be. The thing about being a Christian is not that we're all of that, that we're smart, that we got it together, that we're not hip hypocritical. Of course we're hypocritical. Of, of course we're hypocrites. Of, of course we've got some liars, um, some lust, uh, some, some anger, some just, of course we got that. That's why we come to Christ. If we didn't have, if we didn't have any of those things in our lives and in our background, there'd be no need to come to him. And so what does he say? 
what is what is what does David say uh, that he desires a broken and contrite heart? I would wish that no one would have to have an abortion, but if after having one, if then your heart is broken and contrite, amen. In her case, after two, amen. But not to promote more of it, unlike these other people. No. This this goofball in the beginning says we're supposed to choose life. Okay. Okay. You have clearly missed the mark, Pastor. But she has it. She has gotten it. And she understands the point. We are up. We all need a savior because we all suck. We all stink. We've all fallen. And she recognizes that. The problem with a lot of black churches, with a lot of churches, period, but, but I'm speaking specifically of black churches because it is a plague in the black church where we want to be more black than anything else. Where if whoever is um, running for the presidency or for a governorship or the mayor of a city, if they have a D in front of their name, then that's what we're going to vote because we've been told that they're going to fix all the problems of black people when they never have. Now, am I saying that the Republicans are going to do? That's not what I'm saying at all either. Uh, our problems as black folks can't be fixed by a party. Quick, real quick, guys. Name the group of people, the ethnic group in America that that is progressing um, by asking for the government to fix their problems, to help them, to solve the issues of the system. Name that group. Even if you think that Let's say racism, systematic racism is there. Let's say even if you think that the criminal justice system is unfair, name the group that is complaining about it and getting ahead. While you all are, are ransacking your minds trying to figure it out, let me take a drink. Now I'll answer the question. Us, us assists, us colored folk, us black folk, no, I ain't talking about, no, 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 not the LGBTQ community. No, no. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, they couldn't point to any injustices. They manufactured some, but no, I mean an ethnic community. Asians don't. Hey, you know what Hispanics are doing? The Hispanic, the Hispanic group, go, just, just, just pay attention. Look at what they're doing. They're not focusing on uh, the government. They are, they, they have just crept past socially and economically past us as black folks. Blacks from the Caribbean, they don't come crying about the systems here. Blacks from Africa who are darker than us. Uh, Asian folks. I ain't talking about white folks who, who are from another part of the world um, because someone's going to say, well, they don't look like, they, they look like other white folks. So I, I won't bring in German and Irish and Italian. I won't bring them up. But people from India, from the Middle East, just us. The point is that I'm trying to make, guys, is that no one is going to make your life better for you but you. No one. You can complain about all you want to. Okay, fine. Fine. What's it done for you? How's it? How, how's that work for you? It hadn't, and it won't. And when you go back and look at how we did progress in the past, it wasn't because we were waiting for the government. Go back and look at how the black community actually grew out of Jim Crow before the Civil Rights Movement. Look at the progress of the black community. Look at the family of the black community. But these churches, they don't have a problem with that. They, they don't mind. As a matter of fact, if, you, if I can, they're like a lot of politicians. If I can keep the people down and coming here to hear a word of encouragement and go back home to their, to their uh, lives full of some imaginary plight, then good. Because then, I can tickle their ears and give them something to feed off of for the moment. Um. All the things that have happened, bad, there, there's a lot of things going to happen bad in, in, in the world. It just is. Things bad, I see someone put up Black Wall Street, bad things happen. White folks are evil. Black folks are evil. Hispanic folks are evil. Native Americans, everybody on the planet with hair, skin, and blood is evil inherently. That's, that, that's just what it is. And so to expect perfection from them, well, now you're fooling yourself. But what are we, who, who and what are we supposed to turn to? His word and God who gave it to us. But these pastors have not done that. And that's the problem with the black church. See, we're already fighting black heretics. We're already fighting that. Now, the white folks have theirs and Hispanics do too. It'd be, it'd be one thing because at least, at least the heretics of the world 
believe abortion is wrong. Maybe it's because they have a different hustle. But you guys have a whole nother hustle. <laughs> say what you want to say about them, but at least Marcus Rogers ain't, ain't, ain't for uh, abortion. But you are Freddie Haynes, Jamal Bryant, and a lot of these, you are, and, and you didn't used to be for it, but the reason why you are for it now, the reason why you're for it now is because it gets you ahead in life. That's your means. That's why you think that we're going to move ahead. So you shouldn't be a pastor. And if that's what you really feel, if that's the conviction of your heart, amen, fine. Leave, leave the pulpit and go to the ballot box. Go march, go set up drives, what have you, all these different grassroots initiatives. Go do that. Instead of pretending to be a pastor, missing an opportunity to lead people to help be of use to lead people to Christ. That's the problem that I have. That's why the church is dying. The black church is dying. That's why you're. That's why when people go look for a good church, they're looking for a church that might be more diverse because it's harder. It's becoming harder and harder to find them because more and more of our black per pastors want to hoop, put on a show. Now, not all of them. Do not hear what I'm saying. Not all. There are plenty of black pastors out there, predominantly black churches that don't do this. We need more of them. Now we need obviously more who are white as well, more Hispanic. I don't care what color you are, as long as you have a good word, as long as you are, as long as you are following God's word, I don't care. I don't, I don't care. But these guys, no, no. Uh, you would rather keep us in bondage to what happened in the past, keep us tied to that, than actually pointing to the one who can set people free, indeed, spiritually speaking. You don't want to do that. Now, I said not all of black. Let me, let me point you to a guy who is not that way. This guy, his name is John Jenkins. The purpose of this is not to make you feel any guilt. We serve a God that will forgive you no matter what you did. Amen. Now, I want to put that out front. I want to put that right up front. That when we sin, we serve a God. That when we confess to him, he will cleanse us and forgive us of all of our sins. Thank the 18 of y'all for the rousing information of that. But what the scripture says is that God hates when innocent blood is shed. And my job is to show you, walk you down through scriptures, God's heart about this matter. All right, y'all with me? Okay, let's start off by looking at these. I just got four points today that I want to share with you. And the first one deals with the fact that in God's view... When God looks at life, it's based on the blood. It's in the blood. Life is in the blood. Um, the world says life doesn't begin until you're, you're physically born and take a breath. That's what the world says. You have to be existent. You have to come out the womb and take a breath. And then you have life. But according to God, life is in the blood. The moment the blood is flowing. Because see... A, a, a baby in the womb has a heartbeat at a certain point the baby has a heartbeat and why is the baby heart beating because it's pumping blood and it's life and so Le Leviticus 17 11 says for the life of the flesh is in the blood I want you to get the heart of God then this is an important deal right here. This is very important. Now, let me let me address that too. I see you said that that's your pastor. Well, hey man, I don't I don't know anything about uh a lot about him, uh, his doctrine, but he's right on there. He's right on there. And let me pull this up because I want you all to see what he what he's speaking of, and then let me shed some more on this. He see, he's speaking out of out of Leviticus 17 11. He says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it for you on the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the life. And so his point is, if there's blood in you, then there's life in you. Now, naturally, someone's going to come back and say, okay, well, so after 20 weeks when there's a heartbeat and there's blood pumping, then, then maybe abortion should be okay before then. No, because the baby has blood in him before then. Well, well, wait a second. If there's no heartbeat, well, because the baby has how awesome God is, the mother's blood. Now, there's think about how awesome this is. The mother's blood does not get mixed up with the baby's blood, but the mother's blood is there to supplant or to supply 
nourishment for the the, the fetus. Uh, and the fetus is not a bad term. That's just, that's just a, a, a spot, uh, not a spot, but a a moment in development. You go from a zygote to a, to a fetus, to an infant, to a toddler, and so forth. So uh, think about how awesome God is. But there's blood in them. There's blood in them all the way through, which tells us what? If we follow that, then that baby has life. That baby has life. How awesome is God, right? <laughs> how awesome is God? Now, I do want to cover some things. I do because I've, I've, I've seen a couple of comments. Uh, before I get to the comments, so I do want to go to the scripture some more. Now, if you want to look, by the way, by the way, if you if you have any any qualms about abortion, you shouldn't. The Bible is clear what God thinks. Now, we're told we're told uh, what God hates. Uh, where is it at? Oh, let's put it on the screen. We are told, and Avi, you've heard this uh, probably ad nauseum. You'll keep hearing it. The sixth thing that the Lord hates. And then 17, he says, uh, hands that shed innocent blood. Hands that shed innocent blood. No more, no one is more innocent than infant, than unborn baby. And we we went on this before about if there's what I would call an accidental abortion. We did this when, when exposing Rashad Ritchie, how he misused the text. But in Exodus 21, 23, I, I think it's just good, helpful to put it up again. When these two men are striving, if in verse 23, but if there is harm, then you shall pay for life. So if the child is accidentally aborted, then there's a death penalty there. There Now, that's an accidental abortion. What happens on an intentional abortion? But these pastors do not care. Again, they are friends with the world, but the Bible speaks of them also. Let's see what he says about them. He says in 2 Timothy 3, 1, he says, but understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty for people will be lovers of themselves. We see that in Mr. Jamal, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having an appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such people. For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women burdened with sin and led astray by various passions. Isn't it one? Isn't it interesting how when you go and look at not this happens in a lot of churches, but especially those two churches that I highlighted, as well as Friendship West here in Dallas, that the majority of people that attend those churches are women, because you speak to a particular problem and you tell them that you have the answer, the key, but you're not giving them the key, the actual key. You're not giving the solution that God recommends because God, God in no way, shape, or form or fashion has advocated what they, have, what they have advocated. And so this is the demise, the downfall of the church, the black church. Wanting to be friendly with the world and the world's trajectory right now is obviously away from God. But the, tra but the trajectory of a lot of these black churches is to be political, uh, to be more social and less spiritual. He said it in, 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 in his, uh, his speech when he said, this isn't about righteousness, but it's about X, Y, and Z. Why isn't it about righteousness? When as a believer should it ever not be about righteousness? That should never even come out of your mouth, but it did. Now, I've seen a couple of comments. I've seen a couple of comments and I need to address them. I won't put the commenter on um, because I'm not trying to blast anybody, but I, I, I want to uh, adjust, uh, address some things. It says, go at white dudes with the same energy. I do. I do. That, that, that statement just to me, just, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, unless, unless, I don't, I don't know, unless you're trying to, unless you are, you are trying to defend their actions, which they are indefensible. You say that adults are being aborted every, no, no, they're not. No, 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 not, not in the same sense. But if you're saying that abort, adults are being killed every day, well, sure, fine. I get that. I get that. You know the difference between the, uh, the adults that die and the unborn that die? The adults had a shot. They had a chance. They had some. They had some life. They had some living going on. 
these unborn didn't get that chance. So this issue about questioning if I would do the same towards towards white folk, I, I don't know what you're trying to impugn or what you're trying to say. Just just come out and say it. You think I'm I'm? We think I'm selling out the black community? Say it. Go ahead and say it, and we can have a real conversation. Someone says, if you don't remember the past, you are condemned to relive it. Well, the past, let's go back even further. Not just the recent racial past, but the past that's, that, that showed what happens if you disobey God. That's the past that we keep reliving. The more you sin, the more punishment comes. And the, the, the longer it takes you to return to God, the more you are doomed like, like the Jews in Judges, these cycles, these never end, endless cycles. Maybe, maybe, uh-oh, I'm about to get in trouble. I'm about to get some angry folks. Um, I'm about to make some folks angry. Maybe there might be a judgment on this black community. Since we're, since we're, since we're going to say that we're godly, but, but don't by and large act that way. Maybe. And I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud. Maybe. Now, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And I don't know what yours is going to do. And we're going to stand up and call this stuff out. So, but, well, if you're against abortion, just say it and quit and quit trying to attack me. That's what, how about that? Or go make a video uh, and say why you disagree with what I'm saying. But in no way, shape, or fashion am I, do I have a problem with uh, the sins of, uh, uh, of blacks only and not the sins of whites or Hispanics or anyone else. So, but guys, I thank you for, for, uh, for showing up. I thank you for giving me your time and your attention. I ask that you do this. I ask that you do this. Okay. I ask that you do this. Anytime, every time that you hear anybody white or black matter of fact let me make this clear for the folks in the back white or black hispanic or asian who think that abortion is okay even if you don't have the right words tell them as boldly as you can that that's wrong it's a sin and god will judge you for that let them know Anyone that you, if you get some time to write it down, send them a letter, send them an email. Let folks know that not following the dictates of God is the wrong thing. Now, what you'll notice is, what you'll notice is that when you hear these arguments, you don't hear, you don't hear them bringing up very many scriptures. Well, I mean, that, that kind of makes sense, right? That, that kind of makes sense. Uh, because you won't have those. You won't have those issues. I mean, you don't have those scriptures to turn to. So, anyway, uh, guys, I want to thank you so much uh, for for tuning in again on this channel, in my church. Hopefully, in your church. If your church doesn't do this, leave it. Leave that church and go to another one. But we stand for what God says. Amen. Amen. Uh oh, my. Th